All right, hey guys, um, I just came after the hive watching the Arcane trailer and I've been looking through community discourse and this is gonna be the Arcane Season 2 trailer breakdown for all you guys who care about that stuff. So, the very first scene of the trailer is actually gonna be the aftermath of the council room. We can actually tell through the window of that we see on the left. The, this window is very reminiscent of the council window. So, yeah, and we also, it's interesting that we see all these Hextech particles around these blue dots. So, maybe Jinx used Hextech inside of her rocket. See, when we first saw the rocket, it's mainly just chemtech inside. So I thought, hey, it's, it's not going to be that big of an explosion. But the fact that there are that there is hextech inside that thing, it might actually cause a lot of damage. Next scene we see is uh is Ambassador saying that the council's dead. And that confirms my theory about uh, all the counts, all the relevant council members dying, and the new council being appointed, being super vindictive and wanting to declare war. So yeah, that's a common Malfoy dub. The next important thing we see is Ambessa in her full battle gear. Ambessa started talking about how Wrath will be get Wrath. So that's another theory confirmed. I, I don't really think it's that big of a theory. I I, I didn't I wasn't the one that invented this stuff that Ambessa's gonna take charge in season two. Just looking at the show, it's something pretty easily to conclude that the reason why they're introducing Ambessa is just so she takes over the war narrative. And alongside that fact, I kind of predicted this in my war video, but yeah, Nox and, Nox and mercenary soldiers are going to come help Piltover out because they suck. I actually think it's good because the enforcers, they, they suck. They aren't going to fucking win the war. You actually need competent soldiers who can actually do stuff. So that's why you get other soldiers. And that's also good they're not equipping all of the soldiers with Hextech because if they die, then that means a random Zonic can just pick up a Hextech rifle and start completely leveling all of Piltover with it. So yeah, next scene, we get a, we get a really eerie shot of the blimp. I mean, this just has to be Jinx. Jinx says she wants to ride the rocket. It's probably the scene where Jinx nukes built over. So I'll leave it off at that. The next scene of Caitlyn. Caitlyn actually says uh, they have she's leading a strike team into Zod to accomplish three tasks. Stop Jinx, stop Silco's minions, and stop Shimmer. And I mean, it's pretty easy to guess that that's what they want to accomplish. I mean, I was right on the theory that it was a specific strike team. Because there's just the guy with the shield. Why would you have a shield if you're not going to go after Jinx? So it's specifically a Jinx Strike Force, and that also accomplishes a bunch of other stuff. These guys are definitely going to die. We get seen with chem tanks and Iron Man suits that are just attacking Piltover. So it's cool that those guys are getting a buff, and I wonder if this is how war is going to play out. We aren't going to have a complete battlefield. There's, there's just going to be random attacks in the Piltover and on, and that's going to be actually perfect. But the fact that we got massive army lined up like right before makes me think that there is going to be a battlefield. So I'm wondering how Arcane is going to juggle that between the quieter moments and just the massive set pieces that are war. But I guess we'll just have to look to see how that plays out too. We also get enforcers with shields. I mean, this is just this is just the prison. Later in the trailer, we get a picture of a prison and these guys just look to be like riot guards, especially with their batons, right? These guys aren't charging the war. You're not going to bring batons in the war. So, this is, so we are getting a prison, which makes me interested because like, are there going to be criminals inside the prison that are going to help out Zod? Are there going to be... This might be where Mundo and Ergo come into play. Like, we need more strong people in Zod, because otherwise they're going to get stomped by Piltover and Noxus army combined. So the prison break might actually bring a lot of champions that we know who live in Zod to actually come out and start joining the fight. So that's going to be hype. Right here, we see an explosion happening at the prison. And yeah, as I said, prison break gives Zod more, a few more allies. Like, I don't, I don't get why they just have, like, a prison here. This might be, like, a prisoner of war camp, I think. Because they have they already have Stillwater prison. Why not keep your, like, most hardened criminals inside Stillwater prison, where it's, like, in the middle of the ocean. No one's going to get to it. Instead, no. Let's just have a random prison built. Is this Zod? Let's just have a random prison built in the middle of the city that anyone can just get to and free them. So, yeah, this, this just seems like a prisoner of war camp. And it's also being freed by some mysterious figure. Um, I don't think it's going to be anyone we know. This is a new character. Because otherwise, um, who, who who could this be? Jinx? I don't think it's Jinx. Okay, what's the point of wearing a hood if you're going to draw a giant monkey right behind you? This is definitely going to be a new character. Maybe it's Orianna or something. It's going to be a character working for Zon since they're breaking out Zon prisoners. So, I mean, it could be Piltover since the prison is located in Zon. But as, as we saw earlier, we have Enforcer Guard. So it, it's probably a Piltover prison, and it's going to be a Zonite breaking the Piltover prisoners out. So I have no clue who this could be. All right, I'm recording this section a bit after my first recording because a few more information came out. Yeah, this this scene here is actually the firelights. We see the bat ear guy that we got pummeling by. So since this is happening in the prison, I think the firelights are breaking out innocent Zonites that have been captured in prisons. So that's actually pretty interesting to see that the firelights are actually going to be like a bit more... I mean, it, it seems that they're like pros on, right? I would assume that they're fighting for peace. They would try to stop the fighting, but 
I guess they're just helping the ordinary citizens that are just caught in the crossfire. So also, yeah, maybe the hooded person is also just the firelight. This here, it's a wanted poster for Jinx. It's actually interesting because the paint in the background makes me think this might be from the Firelights. Maybe the Firelights want Jinx, but look at the poster. It also has the Enforcer Signia stamp on, on it, so maybe this is also just in Piltover over and on some Jinx graffiti. Who knows? Here's another shot of Vi fighting, confronting Jinx in her lair. We get a shot of Singe getting arrested by the getting arrested by the Enforcers. And right here, Singe is like, he seems really nonchalant. He dropped the scalpel. Warwick's probably going to come out in this scene and just like completely destroy these two forces. But I mean, average in the force are L, right? These guys, these guys fucking suck. So really interesting to see. Why is Singe not under better protection? He's like the number one asset for Zod if they're going to develop weapons to actually stand a chance against fighting. So Savika, you got to get on this. Protect this guy. This guy's your goat. We also have this massive fucking chem tank. This is probably one of the chem barons. I don't think they're just going to give out this giant suit just to like a random guy. Some people are saying it might be Dr. Mundo. I mean, I could see that, especially since like the blade kind of looks like a scalpel. But I mean, I just think it's going to be a Remy or something like Jace opponent. And they just have the massive chem tank because this isn't just going to be like some ordinary father soldier. It's gonna, probably going to be someone important, especially if they're going to be like a whole boss battle about this. We also get pictures of this Yordle Chem Baron, and this guy looks to be really important. We see him doing a lot of cool stuff in the trailer, and the fact that he's a Yordle makes me think, how, how are they going to kill him? Yordles are immortal, right? So if this guy's about to die, if this guy somehow dies, then that means Heimerdinger dies, cause, because Yordles can't be killed by that definition. So yeah, Heimerdinger dies theory. So this imagery is actually pretty weird. Some people are saying it could be Victor, Victor's machine church, and these are his worshippers, and... That, that, that that's lady of the church but I think it's just Jinx this scene is very reminiscent to Silco smoking out all the other chem barons we see in the very front that there it has the Yordle chem baron so the fact that Jinx is gassing the chem barons are like hey you guys are under my control you guys do what I say and it's also Jinx emulating what her father did in the past and the statue also kind of looks like Jinx so we get the shot of Savika with the giant chopper arm. And it's interesting to see that, hey, she's working with Jinx. That's another theory confirmed. We know she's going to be working with Jinx because the fact is that if Zod starts fighting within themselves, they're going to lose the Piltover and Noxus combined. Everyone needs to come together. And I think Savika realizes that Jinx is going to be a capable leader of Zod and she is the symbol that they need. Savika knows herself. She isn't cut out to be a so-called messiah figure. But she, she just buckles down, gets her job done, commands people to do stuff. She holds the line for Jinx to actually blossom and take the reins and actually and be the true savior of Zahn. But it's just how they worked out their differences and started working together and how they're and complementing each other's strengths so that they can actually win the war and achieve Zahn's freedom. We also see Savika fighting something. This seems to be a spike. I mean, I theorize that Camille's going to come into play in Arcane Season 2. And the, she has spiky legs. So this might be Savika versus Camille. This scene is of Victor. If you look at the guy, he has a cane, and it's Victor probably doing some stuff. Since I theorize that Victor's gonna get consumed by the hex core, this might be the hex core like spreading itself and consuming other people. This seems to be in Zon just by the color palette alone, being very purple and whatnot. And the guys in robe actually seem to be the shimmer monsters that were attacking by when they went down to the fissury. So maybe like the hex core Victor is like using Victor's mindset of, oh, I want to cure disabilities by going inside Zon. Since he is the hex core, he's like curing these guys of their addiction and maybe making their bodies stronger by like kind of going the same operation by fusing hex tech their own flesh and shimmer together to create a stronger body so this is actually really amazing to see victor just getting followers going in the sun and helping the people who actually need it so more victor hype and this is great to see. I said, I've been advocating that Jinx is going to be leader of Zod. A lot of people gave me hate on this in the Discord, in the subreddit. But yeah, Jinx is the leader Zod needs. And she is the leader of the revolution. So this just feels great to see Jinx being loved and heralded as the change that Zod needs. So this, 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 this makes me cry. Jinx is going to be actually amazing. This season. I'm looking so forward to see what, see what she's going to do. And we get a lot of pictures of Heimerdinger looking really surprised in the new season promo art. So, yeah, I think Heimerdinger is just going to die. And, uh, I mean, so far, it's really looking like Heimerdinger is going to die. So, I mean, I don't have anything to say about that. We get this fucking monstrous image of Warwick here. And, dude, Vander, if this is Vander, Vander's fallen so far. And there's going to be... It's going to be so great, the interactions with Warwick and Vi. But, yeah, we know Warwick is coming. It's been something... He is a lot. And Warwick just looks like a fucking monster. He is going to carry all of Zod on his back, just like Vander did in the first war. So, yeah, looking forward to that.
and this is Caitlyn's hex rifle. I said that if it just shoots like a normal rifle, like in League of Legends, it's going to be boring as fuck. But it's nice to see that Caitlyn's rifle is actually pretty cool and it actually does some cool hex hex stuff. You see, on the rifle, it already has two modes. On the top, it has the actual bullets that it shoots. And on the bottom, it has the nets that it shoots. And it's very symbolic of Caitlyn's choice. Grayson asks Caitlyn, what are you shooting for? And the fact that her gun has two modes, one for lethal killing and and one for non-violent just entrapment. It's like every time Caitlyn shoots a bullet, she's making a choice. What are you shooting for? Are you shooting to kill or are you shooting to save someone? Are you shooting to protect the safe? So these are going to be the two choices. This is going to be main motif for Caitlyn throughout season two. This is the choice of her actions and what she, in the past, she does decide to go down throughout performing her enforcer operations and her ultimate ideologies as becoming a protector of Hilltober. And this is probably going to be the final confrontation between Vi and Powder. So I think just because of how this whole stage is set up and we have the engravings on the front of the stage, it really looks to be the opera inside Piltover that Jinx managed to turn for Hyda on herself. And that's actually very promising for Zon. That means either like Zon pushed so much into Piltover that Jinx can just claim the opera as her own. Cause or like Jinx just destroyed Piltover and she just made a base here to trap by. Also in the opera scene, if you also look in the background of the opera, some people say it's uh that's a that's a statue of Janna, so there's that. But if you if you look at the pictures on the wall, it seems really sad. I think Jinx and Powder, they've been completely separated in at the end of season one. That's the exact thing I'm talking about, Zod. We can't have internal conflict for Zod. We can't have Zonites fighting Zonites because otherwise that, that's gonna be a real trouble for them and they're not gonna win the war against Piltover. Same thing for Jinx. We can't have Jinx and Powder having all these mental trauma fighting each other. It's nice to see how like Powder and Jinx are completely separated, how we have Jinx in her full form in the loud moments of fighting people. And in the quiet moments, we just have Powder in herself, in her own room, drawing art, drawing pictures of Bander holding by and Powder. We have pictures of Powder crying over Vander's body, of the wolves inside of her head. So Jinx and Powder can be more like two separate people this season, and I need to look into that because there are a lot of uh, analytical implications of that. But yeah, this is the stage, and this is where Jinx lures Vi to go fight her. And these two sisters look out for blood. Like, if you look at Jinx, she is... she. There's only hatred in that. Vi, thank you for calling me Jinx, but... I mean, you, you, I don't know. Does she want to kill Vi? Or does she just like want to make Vi stop like running away from her for the poster we get the sentiment that jinx is like hey vi you are mine so maybe this is jinx trying to destroy vi and make her like cut off her arms and cut off her legs so she's just a stump that that jinx can own and for vi she looks so heartbroken the fact that she called her jinx i mean jinx must have done some horrible stuff this season and they're, they're just duking it out for the ideology i really hope vi eventually comes to forgive jinx but that's the season two trailer and that's all the information that i've seen in the first hour that i've been prowling that I've been perusing all the community pages and I've it's an update I've given you. So I hope that's everything. I didn't miss anything. Otherwise, I'll do a follow up about the Annecy event. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And I will catch you guys in the next video, the next breakdown, in the next news section. Bye bye. Also, I remember some of you guys in the comment section were saying that you guys went to the Annecy Awards and I'd really like to find out about all the information that you guys heard. So um, if you went to an NSC event or you just want to talk to me for some reason, uh, I'm going to leave my Discord in the, in the description. So, I mean, just feel free to contact me. I, I don't really mind. All right. Malphone out for real this time.